Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, man, I got a pretty interesting topic for you guys. And the, and the topic is, or the question is, can Kawhi Leonard dethrone the king this year? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be on the lookout for our Dreamers Pro community that we're trying to launch on Monday. Uh, we won't be publishing any content tomorrow just to give ourselves some time to do that. So uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the last bit, bit of content we're, we're putting out this week. And also be on the lookout for DreamersPro.com, which we'll be working on as soon as we launch that because uh, this thing has been really uh, slowing us down. So anyway, uh, uh, be on the lookout for those things. And let me get into the topic here. So um, a lot has been made this season of uh, various teams, right? The Nets, um, even before the trade of, uh, even before the acquisition, of James Harden, a lot of people were making a lot about the Nets with given the fact that they're going to have they, 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 that Kevin Durant was going to be returning to play with uh, with Kyrie Irving. There was a lot of expectations coming out of that team. I even me, I was very excited to see how they were going to play, how Kevin Durant was going to bounce back from his injury, and he's having pr pretty virtually a 50, 40, 90 season. He's playing his tail off, and the Nets were doing pretty decently uh, before the James Harden trade. So there was this kind of story circling around. Uh, this buzz circling around the next thing you had Luka Doncic who was the early season or the preseason MVP uh, favorite um, they haven't really lived up to the hype although Luka Doncic puts up good numbers individually but his team is not doing very well they're the number nine seed in the Western Conference but they've been coming on recently they won their last four games so uh, their last four games in a row so there's been that there's, there's been Joel, Joel Embiid who seems to finally have gotten him, himself in the proper shape to be able to go out there and compete the 76ers have the number one record in the Eastern Conference they're looking like they're looking legit they're looking like the favorites to come out of the East uh, so far so Joel Embiid has been there he's also been in the MVP discussion and then you have the Utah Jazz who are playing the best basketball of any team in the NBA period in the story they're nine and one of them in their last 10 games they have the best record in the NBA with a 21 and five uh, record but the Lakers are right behind them and they've won six seven games in a row and they're trying to catch them I believe for that number one spot and I think at a certain at a certain point teams are going to be jockeying for different are, are going to be trying to position themselves properly going into the playoffs making sure that they have that they're kind of you know um, understanding what the type of matchups that they want to have in in, in, in the playoffs uh, are moving forward because uh, sometimes matchups make series as we saw some teams just match up better than others so there's all of these things going on in the background all of these things going on in the background and um you know but in all of this it still remains the clippers and the lakers right this was the big billing of the nba last season this was this was this was what it was supposed to be about and in the regular season they didn't disappoint they split their regular season series clippers took the first two games the first game they took that first game on on opening night when Kawhi leonard debuted his commercial and they were able to get that win off the lakers um, and I think it was the first time LeBron James was playing with AD, but Kawhi wasn't playing with Paul George in that opening game. They took that game. Then on Christmas Day, Lakers were leading for pretty much all of that game, and the Clippers came back, won the game. Uh, very exciting. And the Lakers took game three. LeBron balled out. And then game four was the same thing. I think they took that game four in the Orlando bubble. So it was it was pretty exciting. When we were all And we were all looking forward to this confrontation in the Western Conference Finals. Um, and uh, it never happened. It never happened. Uh, Lakers made it there. Clippers couldn't get past the second round against the Denver Nuggets. They just completely capitulated, uh, you know, under the pressure, going up three-one and losing that series, and they just let it go. They let that series slip, uh, sl uh, slip, slip, uh, slip through their hands. Now we're in this season currently, right? Both teams are playing well. Lakers are, are, are playing very well. LeBron James is one of the leading candidates for regular season MVP. I think he is the leading candidate for regular season MVP. Just given the fact that he's playing so well in a lot of these games that he's been playing in, Anthony Davis has been unavailable. And in the games that he has played in, he's been flat out cons in, uh, inconsistent, right? Uh, if I can pull up Anthony Davis's stats here, I'm going to try to pull him up momentarily. Um, he's not playing at the level that he played last year. Now, he's been coming on recently, but this season he's averaging 23 points per game, shooting 53% from the field, 28, 20, let's say 30% from the three, 70% from the free throw line. Um, a lot of his numbers are down. Last season, you know, everything was up. His rebounding was, was up by a lot. 
Uh, his assists were up. His steals were up. His blocks per game were up. His free throw percentage were up by almost 15 uh, percentage points. Three point per shooting percent. Uh, three point shooting percentage is up uh, by three percent. Field goal percentage is down. Uh, is is actually up this year versus last year, but his scoring is down three points per game. So a Anthony Davis hasn't been his his hasn't been his himself. If we're going to compare, if we're going to juxtapose these numbers to the to the season prior, it's been LeBron. LeBron has been the steadying force, the calming force on that team. And I think LeBron James, to be quite honest with you, is playing better this year than he did last year. His numbers, are, his numbers are no, his his scoring is virtually the same, although it's up a bit. Three point shooting, three point percentage, uh, shooting percentage is up. He's getting more rebounds. He's getting fewer assists this season, but he's getting about the same steals. But he's one year older, so I think LeBron James, for that reason, given the fact that his co star. Uh, he's just been up and down this season. It hasn't been uh, consistent, and he's been the, the driving force. Um, I think that uh, LeBron should be the, the the leading candidate for regular season MVP, given the fact that the Lakers are only one loss behind the Utah Jazz, for the, who have the overall number one record in the NBA, given the fact that the Lakers just have one more loss, six to their five. So you have, you have that. The Clippers, on the other hand, are having an absolute bounce back season. I don't even think this is a question right now. They got better. Uh, I think they got better. They got more size. They got more rim protection. They got better. They got more mature players. You can see on their roster, they have a better coach, a better offensive system, much better ball movement. You can see that Paul George is having a career year. If we're looking at his efficiency numbers, he's shooting over 50% from the field, close to 48% from the three, which is a career high for him, over 90% from the free throw line. So he's having a career year. Kawhi Leonard is coming on, averaging virtually the same amount of numbers, uh, points that he averaged last season. Last season, he averaged 26, 27.1. This season is averaging 26.7. Uh, he's shooting a higher field goal percentage, shooting uh, four, uh, four uh, field goal percentage, uh, four points, four. <laughs> Oh my God, he's shooting four percentage points higher this season than he is last season. His three point percentage is virtually the same. He shoot he shot thirty eight percent last season. This year he's shooting thirty nine. Free throw percentage is virtually the same, eighty eight percent. His rebounding is a bit down this year, from seven point one to five point nine. I would like to see those rebounding numbers go up. Assists are virtually the same, and the steals are virtually the same. So these two guys are also having a great um, a great year, but. Let's talk about the rivalry between LeBron James, uh, the current the current rivals that LeBron has in the NBA right now, and in me, I think you're, and, and to me, I think he only has two two realistic rivalries, right? The first one is Kevin Durant, and the second guy is KD, right? Now he's faced both of these guys in NBA championship rounds. He went against Kawhi Leonard in the NBA championship two times, and they're one and one. LeBron got the first one in 2011 if i'm not mistaken and i think the spurs got the second one off of them i think in 2014 if i'm not mistaken yes so they've both met each other in the finals and they've beaten each other they've gone one and one against each other so these guys have met in the finals not like if they met uh in the playoffs they've met in the finals where, where, where the games mattered the most and they've gone against each other same thing with kevin durant and lebron james they've met each other three times in the finals lebron is one and two against kevin durant the first time he beat them when he was with the miami heat that was the first time he won his first championship against the oklahoma city thunder who had at the time russell westbrook kevin durant uh kendrick perkins james harden coming off the bench who completely disappeared which is nothing new uh, and um, the Miami Heat were able to get that that win off of them, beat them in five games. Russell Westbrook was there, Kevin Durant was there, averaging his numbers, but it didn't really amount to anything. And then KD got his payback when he was with the Golden State Warriors, when I think they beat them back to back, uh, and in the NBA Finals. So these guys have met in the finals. Now, some people may say, "Well, listen, it's KD before Kawhi." I can understand that, but Kawhi and LeBron are playing in the same conference, so I think the confrontational the confrontation is much greater to happen given the fact that these two guys are in the same conference. Now, I think we potentially can see the Lakers go to the finals and play the Nets. It, it can happen, but I think we have a greater percentage uh, potential of seeing the Lakers versus Clippers first again because in the same conference, right? Um, now, this year I think the Clippers are better. I think that if the Clippers and the Lakers were to meet meet each other. In the Western Conference Finals, that's the only way they're going to meet because they're both going to have the top two, the top, they're both going to be in the top four spots in the East, in the Western Conference. So if they were to meet each other, let's say in the Western Conference Finals or, uh, yeah, Western Conference Finals, let's just say that. Um, I think the Clippers could beat the Lakers. Let me also say this. I think Kawhi is the only person in the Western Conference that can beat LeBron James. It's just what I believe. 
I think he's the only guy that's capable of beating the guy, beating LeBron. I think LeBron is either going to be too much, too uh, is going to be much better than the other guys he may face, or he's just going to be smarter and psycho. He's going to have some type of psychological edge over those guys. I don't think he has. I don't think he'll have a psychological edge uh, over Kawhi Leonard. I don't think Kawhi will look across the court and feel any type of fear or second guess himself or be in awe or anything like that or be afraid of the moment going against LeBron. I don't think there's going to be any of that whatsoever. I think him. And KD are probably the only two players in the NBA that could probably look at LeBron James and look at him in his face and not feel um, feel feel um, intimidated in any way, shape, or form. So I feel like if the Clippers and the Lakers were to meet in the playoffs, I would put my money on the Clippers. To be quite honest with you, to be, to be, to be frank with you, and really I'm salivating at that matchup because I'd really want to see how these two teams will match up with each other. Um, to be quite honest with you, it's something that I'm really, I really, 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 really really want to see and i think a lot of you guys out there would love to see that so the question is can Ka Kawhi leonard dethrone the king this year i think it, it's the contingent upon obviously these two teams meeting in the western conference finals if they were to meet and it's still a question mark a lot of people are going to give the benefit of the doubt to the lakers because they've done it understandably but if the clippers were to get to the western conference finals which is something they had never done have ever done and they were to meet the Lakers, I would put my money on the Lakers. I mean, on the Clippers at that at, uh, at that point to come out of that series. And I think that Kawhi Leonard could dethrone the King if they were to meet. But that is something we don't know because games have to be played. I don't know if the Clippers are going to make it to the Western Conference Finals. There are a lot of games that there are a lot of games that have to be played, and we're about three months away from that uh, from that point right now. So I don't know. But if they were to meet. I think he could. So what I want to know from you guys is, do you think Kawhi Leonard could dethrone the King if they were to meet in the Western Conference Finals? Or do you think, listen, LeBron and the Lakers are going to be too much? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.